But we start with a development around the murder of Chris Hani and correctional services, confirming in the last hour that Hani's killer, Jean Isvalis, will not be released today, as had been expected. The department says it will only finalize his parole after he has received what they say is the necessary medical clearance from a medical team in a statement issued in just the last 45 minutes. The department says this decision was reached following an agreement between lawyers for Jean Isvalis and the state attorney. Last week, the Constitutional Court directed the Correctional Services Minister, Ronald Lamola, to place Valush on parole. The decision has ignited angry protests with parties and organizations taking to the streets to, disappoint, to demonstrate their disappointment and frustration. Valush was then also stabbed by a fellow inmate earlier in the week, but later reported to be in a stable condition. News from Africa's Govan Whittles has spent much of the day outside the Jose Mampuru prison. He's in our studio now. Govan, good evening. What's the latest? Well, Stephen, we spent much of the day outside the correctional centre in anticipation of catching a glimpse of Yanis Wallace probably or possibly being whisked away in a correctional services department car. Now we have that confirmation that he's still recovering. He suffered an upper body wound when he was stabbed by a fellow inmate. Uh, we've since learned through reporting that that inmate is a former uh, employee of the South African Air Force who had uh, failed uh, his uh, test twice to be admitted uh, into the Air Force and South subsequently shot a colleague. He was convicted of murder and attempted murder of another colleague. And in reporting by News24, um, sources telling them that Janusz Walusz and the person who stabbed him were close acquaintances who had been in contact uh, for a number of years while they'd been serving their sentences. We know he was served while dishing up his dinner. Um, and he'd been held in a single cell. Um, and the, the wound that he suffered was serious enough uh, to warrant him being kept under close supervision in the medical center where he currently is. We now know from the Department of Justice and the Department of Correctional Services that he's not well enough to leave that medical center at the Jose Mampuru Correctional Center just yet. Um, but they're not saying whether or not they've agreed to the South African Communist Party's request for him to remain there until a rescission application is heard in the Constitutional Court. All that we know for now is that he remains on a hospital bed and he won't be released just yet. Govan, there'll be legal debate about this, but is it possible that uh, the Correctional Services Minister, Ronald Lamola, who's also the Minister of Justice, is now technically in contravention of a constitutional court ruling. Well, the only loophole that they seem to have used here is that the agreement to keep him um, in the medical center, the hospital in the correctional center, um, is by agreement by his lawyer. His legal representatives have uh, ceded to that uh, request. At this point, it's unclear whether the request actually came from the Department of Correctional Services or from Janusz Walus himself. Um, earlier speaking to Newsroom Africa, his, news, his uh, lawyer wouldn't say uh, whether or not they would approach the High Court uh, on an urgent basis to seek an application to have him released on parole. So it does seem that there is agreement on both ends right now. That constitutional court order, of course, didn't make provision for the possibility of him being stabbed and needing to go to hospital while being in the correctional center. So we're in uncharted waters, as it would seem, um, but we're there by agreement between the Justice Department and the legal representatives of Chris Hani's killer, Janusz Wallace. Govan, it's unprecedented times in terms of, if you look at the history of Janusz Wallace, if you look at what he did, if you look at what his aim was back in 1993 as well, similar cases like this, people like Eugene de Kock, for example, how have they been handled when they've been granted parole? Well, in a very delicate way, Eugene de Kock uh, released from uh, the correctional center and taken away in an unmarked car and uh, importantly put in a safe house, uh, his location not disclosed. That's important because yesterday when, when there were, was a protest outside the Jose Mampuru correctional center, uh, there was calls, so there were calls, albeit jokingly, from some members of the ANC for Janusz Wallace's address in South Africa if he were released and kept here on parole uh, to be released to them because they wanted to confront him. We know that Eugene de Kock had been working with the National Prosecuting Authority um, on a number of older cases, particularly as it pertains to um, people who were killed by uh, the apartheid regime security personnel whose bodies were never found. In this case, Janusz Wallace is, for lack of a better word, wanted by the SACP as well as uh, Chris Hani's family to give a proper explanation about what happened.
they still don't buy his story, um, and that was tabled at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Commission, and they've insisted that an inquest should be held into the assassination of Chris Hani. If such an inquest is eventually called, Yanis Wallis would certainly be one of the key witnesses, uh, possibly the only person who could be forced to testify about what happened to Chris Hani. Gerben Whittles, thank you very much indeed. Our reporter on that story developed strongly through the day. Well.